we got a little, we got a pretty good start last night, and then we fell into that old score runs in a bunch of innings, and then well, one inning, and then don't get a whole lot of runs after that. We've got to be pressure every inning, runners on base, executing, moving runners, putting pressure on the defense. Right? Let's go out and do that tonight. Let's give Jenna a good start. Let's try to score runs in every inning. Come on. For me, it's an everyday thing. You know, I, I think of softball and I think about this team and I think about our preparation 365 days a year. When softball was taken out of the Olympics, feeling what we're feeling now as far as our commitment and investment definitely makes me feel or realize, you know, how people had such a hard time with it. Like, I think our sport took a huge hit. The World Championships is amazing, don't get me wrong, 100%. You know, it was a dream for somebody to represent their country at a World Championships, but it's a whole nother thing to be able to become an Olympian. People have to make some serious decisions in their life when it comes to, like, training for the Olympics, because whether you want to believe it or not, it truly is a full-time job to be able to prepare 100% and be committed to the task at hand. Yeah, so when softball got put back in, I think just the focus and the intent of everything we had done for those 10 years of, of keeping it going and, and playing on the national team and try to bring up the younger generations um, and just having that, having the structure and the infrastructure in place to, to compete at the highest level in the international scene. I thought we did, we did such a good job keeping it going for those 10 years and then all of a sudden we get the vote and we're back in for 2020 and to have that opportunity again to see that 10, 12 years of just of struggle working through the working through those teams that um, that knew they were never going to have that opportunity, but to have that again was just it was pure excitement. But at the same time, like it was time to go to work. A lot of girls get recruited out of British Columbia, some out of Ontario, um, but. It definitely makes, it's definitely a little bit more challenging for Canadians to be able to pursue softball in the United States because it's harder to get seen. Girls have to work a lot harder to get down to the United States to get some exposure. As a staff, we knew was that we had to find a more consistent schedule and we had to put ourselves in a position where on a daily basis we were going to be challenged. Traditionally, the international schedule was one where you would commit to playing in the International Cup that the United States held, and we would, of course, be host for the Canada Cup that we are involved with. But beyond that, your schedule was pretty, pretty dotty. So as a result of that, uh, we started to look at what those options would be. And in 2017, I had reached out to Sherry Kemp, who was the commissioner for the MPF, and I had talked about playing some exhibition games, which she allowed for us to do. Found a wonderful opportunity to partner with the Southern Illinois Miners through their leadership with Mike Pinto and Kathy Peary. It's been an incredible partnership. It's provided us with the stability and, and sort of a home that we needed to have. And the MPF League itself has provided us with exactly the type of competition and tests that we need to be better. We were told the Canadian Wild were, we'd always knew that it was a possibility that we were trying to, we're gonna to try to get an MPF team. We didn't know where, we didn't know what it was gonna look like. So there was, I think, a lot of reservations. A lot of us have never played in the MPF before. Um, so we, we definitely want to just prepare as best we could, but I think it's a lot of excitement. Like for me, I've played in the J Japanese league, I've played internationally, I was at the Olympics, but I never played in the MPF before. So a little bit of excitement to say that, yep, I, I've had a summer in this league or hopefully two summers in the league, so. Having experienced it in 2008 and looking up to the veterans and watching how they worked and how they committed themselves and what they, how they did things, it's just there's so much that goes into it and there's so much preparation that goes into it. So once you're there, it's like, okay, we're there. Boom, that reward's done. On to the next, on to the next, on to the next, so. I think representing your country is the single greatest privilege you can ever have in your life. And I have never taken for granted um, how fortunate I have been, both as an athlete and now as a coach, to wear the maple leaf on my chest and to know that uh, each time we step on the field, we represent 35 million people that support what we do and I'm extremely grateful and um, it has shaped every decision I've ever made in my life. I've often told people that sport has taught me everything I have and it's, re it's responsible for everything I've ever achieved in my life and I will for all, forever be grateful for that.